frontier orbitals can come together in the same way that atomic orbitals can come together. They can come together in a collinear fashion, a coaxial fashion, a sigma type interaction, or they can come together in a side-by-side -side fashion, a pi type interaction. Let's take a look at some examples. So for example, a sigma type interaction might involve a non-bonding pair of electrons as the HOMO interacting with an empty atomic orbital as the LUMO. They'll come together in a coaxial arrangement if they're sigma type, so that non-bonding pair of electrons we could draw as an, maybe it's in an sp3 hybridized orbital. We want to emphasize that it's filled, so we'll add our pair of electrons there. And the sigma type interaction will result when that empty atomic orbital, maybe it's a p orbital that's centered on a carbocation, comes together with its coax in a coaxial fashion with its axis of symmetry aligned exactly along the axis of that sp3 orbital that was filled. We'll try to match the phases, so we'll color that lobe in order to produce a bonding interaction as these two frontier orbitals come together in the directions that are indicated. We'll call that a sigma type frontier molecular orbital interaction. The other type of frontier molecular orbital interaction is a pi type interaction. And so for this, we'll illustrate with a sigma to sigma star type interaction. They'll be side by side, so we need the, to put the axes of symmetry in a parallel arrangement, but not directly in line with one another. The sigma bonding interaction, the filled orbital, might be a typical sp3, sp3 combination to make a sigma bond that's filled, so we want to emphasize that with a pair of electrons, and that combines in a side-by-side -side fashion with an empty orbital that might be sigma star, and so we want to try to align the large lobe of sigma star alongside of that same phase of our sigma orbital, and the rest of sigma star actually will be down here into the page, and we know that the node has to exist, so we need to carefully draw our phases in that way. And now there's a pi-type interaction that exists, a pi-type interaction between the filled sigma bond and the empty sigma star orbital that uh, will end up creating a, a new pi-type interaction. So we can have, as the second mode of interaction, a generalized pi-type mode of bonding. Now, between these two, if it's all possible, the preferred mode of interaction is the sigma type of interaction. And so wherever it's possible, that is where it's not constrained by molecular geometry, we always want to try to come up with a way to introduce the frontier orbitals along a common axis to make a sigma type interaction. But sometimes molecular geometry constrains the ways that these frontier orbitals can interact so that the only mode possible is a pi type. And this will become clear when we look at some examples.